happy Authors Day. Today I'm going to be reading you Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks. And before we start this book, what I need you to do is get out your chrysanthemum paper from your packet and color it. You can color it any colors you want and do it as best and perfect as you can. I want you to take about 10 minutes, take your time, color the flowers, color her dress, her socks, her, um, her bow, the flower. Take your time, that's very important because in this story, I'll tell you a little bit about it before we read it. It's about a little girl, she's a mouse, but her name is Chrysanthemum and her parents tell her all the time how perfect her name is and she loves her name, but then when she starts to go to school, the children at school are unkind to her and they're mean to her and she doesn't feel very perfect after that. So that's why I want you to color your paper as perfect as you can. And every time that someone is unkind to chrysanthemum, we're going to take our paper and put a crinkle in it. We're not trying to crinkle it up into a ball, but each time someone is unkind to her, we're going to take a part and crinkle it. Take another part and crinkle it. And every time somebody is nice to her, we'll try and smooth out the crinkles. But what I'm going to teach you today is that when you're unkind or mean to other people, it wrinkles their feelings or it wrinkles their heart and it hurts their feelings. And so when someone's mean to you, you don't feel very good about yourself. And right now my paper is perfect. And every time someone is mean to chrysanthemum, I'm going to put a wrinkle in it and see that my paper gets hurt, but it just represents the feelings and um, our emotions for when someone is unkind to us and how that makes us feel. And so it helps us learn about being kind to others as much as we possibly can. So go ahead, pause it, color this, and then come back to this point right now. And now I'm going to read it. So don't forget to pause, color it, and then start it back up here. So the book we're going to read is called Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother. Absolutely, said her father. And she was. She was absolutely perfect. Her name must be everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father. And it was. Chrysanthemum. Her parents named her Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew. And when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up. She loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner. And she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written with ink on an envelope. She loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake. And she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself with her fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect. And then she started school. On the first day, Chrysanthemum wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile. She ran all the way. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum, school! But when Mrs. Chud took roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. So here's her name down here. Does it fit on the picture? Look at all of them. They're giggling at her name. Is that nice when someone giggles at your name? So get your paper and put a crinkle in it. About like that. And leave it crinkled. It's so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower. Is that very nice? They're teasing her. So put another crinkle in your paper. Try not to rip it. Just a crinkle. Is our paper perfect anymore? Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. 
She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Mrs. Chud that chrysanthemum name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half as many letters as, as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria explained. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. So she's making fun of how many letters are in her name. Doesn't matter how many letters are in your name. Add another crinkle. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, Victoria said as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. She said, I would change it if I had your name. That is so mean. Add another crinkle. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag, and I'm named after a flower. Oh, pish, said her mother. Your name is beautiful and precious and priceless and fascinating and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, said her mother. Absolutely perfect. So her parents are being kind to her. So now try and take your paper and smooth it out as best as you can they're being kind to her. So smooth it out. So we try to smooth it as best as we can, but is it perfect again? No, she still remembers those feelings. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner, macaroni and cheese with ketchup, and an evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper. She walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria, as Chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, no said Rita. Spirit, let's me. smell, let's smell her, said Joe. <laughs> chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. So they're making fun of her name again. So I'll add another crinkle to your paper. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, a chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with worms and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. It lives in a garden with worms and dirt. Add another crinkle. I just cannot believe your name, Victoria said as the students lined up to go home. Neither can I, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. That is not very nice. I just cannot believe your name. Add another crinkle. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower. They pretended to pick me and smell me. Oh, pish, said her mother. They're just jealous and envious and begrudged and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who wouldn't be jealous of a name like yours, said her mother. After all, it's absolutely perfect. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better after her favorite dessert, chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs, kisses, and parcheesi. So her parents are being nice and kind to her, and she feels so much better. So smooth out the wrinkles. They're being kind to her, and she's feeling good now. But is our paper absolutely perfect anymore? Nope, because she's been hurt so many times from the mean girls and boys at school. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals. Victoria picked her and plucked the leaves and petals one by one until there was nothing left but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare of Chrysanthemum's life. Chrysanthemum wore her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions. 
and her good luck charms. Chrysanthemum took the longest route possible to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, 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 the flowers seemed to say. That morning, the students were introduced to Mrs. Twinkle, the music teacher. Her voice was like something out of a dream, as was everything else about her. The students were speechless. They thought Mrs. Twinkle was an indescribable wonder. They went out of their way to make a nice impression. Mrs. Twinkle led the students in scales. Then she assigned roles for the class musical. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen. Rita was chosen as the spiffy butterfly princess. Joe was chosen as the all-important pixie messenger. And Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. Chrysanthemum's a daisy, chrysanthemum's a daisy. Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was wildly funny. Is that fun to make someone make fun of her name like that? Taunt her? Add a wrinkle. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. What's so humorous? asked Mrs. Twinkle. Chrysanthemum! was the answer. Her name is so long. It scarcely, uh, said Joe. It scarcely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. Those girls are being mean to her again. Add another crinkle. My name is long, said Mrs. Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on a name tag, said Mrs. Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Mrs. Twinkle, I'm named after a flower, too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Mrs. Twinkle. My name is Delphinium, Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, I'm considering chrysanthemum as a name. I think it's absolutely perfect. So Mrs. Twinkle is saying nice things. And she's telling those mean girls off. So let's put some smooths in here because she's helping Chrysanthemum feel better. Chrysanthemum could scarcely believe her ears. She blushed, she beamed, she bloomed. Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum. Joe, Rita, and Victoria looked at Chrysanthemum longingly. Call me Marigold, said Joe. I'm Carnation, said Rita, pointing. My name is Lily of the Valley, said Victoria. So now all the girls are trying to change their names to flowers. Chrysanthemum did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She knew it. Look how she feels right now. Take your paper and try and smooth out a little bit more of the wrinkles. Overall, the class musical was a huge success. Chrysanthemum was absolutely perfect as a daisy. Victoria made the only mistake. She completely forgot her lines as the dainty fairy queen. Chrysanthemum thought it was wildly funny, and she giggled throughout the entire dance of the flowers. Eventually, Mrs. Twinkle gave birth to a healthy baby girl, and of course, she named her Chrysanthemum. So I want you to look at your paper, and we smoothed it out as best as we could, but I want you to think about when you're not very nice to other people, what, it can hap what can happen to other people's feelings when you are mean to them? Or what can happen to yourself when someone's mean to you? So Chrysanthemum didn't ever stand up for herself in the book, but her teacher did for her. But you are capable of telling someone to leave you alone and to say nice things, and you don't have to say mean things to other people when they're mean to you. You can be kind. And that's how we can be a good citizen in our communities and a good person in our families. So I hope you enjoyed listening to the book Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks.